Hello everybody, I'm Michael. In today's video, I would like to talk to you about why and how I had two 12 volt AGM batteries installed in a 2013 Toyota FJ Cruiser. Now I've been thinking about doing this for many years, but had enough reason to justify going forward with it this time. So without further ado, we'll get into the meat of the video. I purchased the FJ Cruiser seven years ago and took it to Nevada, Arizona, Utah, and Colorado. We even went off-roading with it and all the way up to 13,000 feet plus elevation. It was a blast to drive off-road. It was quite the experience. But since then, it's been sitting in my garage for the past seven years. I think I have a total of 14,000 miles on it. And this is mainly because I do have a more efficient vehicle as a daily driver and a full-time job, which limits how much time I can take to travel. Not to say that I haven't traveled by airplane, but because of the pandemic, I don't think that's a very safe thing to do anymore, which leads to the next step, which was to purchase a 2021 teardrop trailer uh, that would enable us to travel more safely. Now that trailer did come, or I should say will come with two six volt AGM batteries and a solar panel. But when connected to the FJ Cruiser and considering all the electrical accessories that I've already added to the truck, including a winch, extra camera monitoring system, electronic brake controller, a more powerful stereo and off-road lights, I wouldn't want to be stranded in the middle of nowhere from running out of battery power. The FJ would be drawing much more current than it was intended to. <laughs> you can piss them off. Yeah, let me just see um, if this is full power or half power. So to address this issue, I did decide to have the two AGM batteries. The AGM stands for Absorbent Glass Matte Battery which does not suffer from sulfation that you would expect from a lead acid battery. They are much more efficient and reliable than the cheaper lead acid batteries. The only drawback, of course, is the cost. Now, I also decided to have a solar panel and controller added to reduce the discharge as well. Now, other FJ Cruiser owners have done this, so you might be asking, like, what's the big deal? Um, well, in 2013, Toyota, by federal mandate, had to add a air injection system. It's actually an air injection pump system that reduces cold start emissions. You'll find this also on the Tacoma 4Runner, and I can imagine other vehicles in the lineup. But nonetheless, this takes up more space in the engine compartment. And because I've added other accessories to the engine compartment, I could no longer mount a second battery in the locations that other people typically do. The only solution would be to place it where the stock battery is, and that's a very tight space. So I did some research online and found some Forerunner and Tacoma uh, dual battery kits for mounting them side by side. Presumably the Tacoma and the FJ Cruiser share the same engine. And uh, I then would just have to deal with the difference in the engine compartment. But it was through a little bit of risk taking some creative thought finagling and modification to the FJ Cruiser that we were able to get this installed. And um, thanks to Nestor Angeles, who did the majority of the install for me. I mean, I don't get me wrong, I love to tinker and I wish I could say I did it myself, but I am pretty busy doing other things. And quite frankly, if there's one thing I've learned with maturity is that uh, it's okay to delegate things to other people if it's going to save you time and you can get other things done that are equally important. So in any case, I'm very happy with the outcome and uh, I'll show you how we installed this. Now this is the stock battery location. Things look a little helter-skelter here because I have a trickle charger attached to this battery 
And just toward the uh, firewall, you can see the distribution block, which I used to connect several of the accessories. So I removed the lead acid battery and I put it side by side uh, near the 12 volt AGM battery. Now this is a group 35 Odyssey deep cycle battery and you can see that lengthwise it's just a little bit shorter. Uh, the width is about the same and interestingly the height is almost the same as well. So this was uh, the closest match I could find and what is recommended by the company that makes the dual battery kit. Now, Off Grid Engineering was the company that I purchased the kit from. As I said earlier, this was uh, designed for the Tacoma, although I do understand they, they make one for the Forerunner, which is also compatible with the FJ Cruiser. Um, in any case, we took the bracket uh, that went under the factory battery, removed it, and this is the aftermarket bracket. Now, we had to uh, cut this uh, nester, my... Uh, installer extraordinaire figured uh, by pre-mounting it on his truck uh, he has an FJ Cruiser as well where to modify it and you can see toward the back of this bracket which is uh, furthest from the camera you see some markings there well that edge was cut so that I could fit uh, to the FJ Cruiser for this new aftermarket battery tray holes had to be drilled into the sheet metal and then paint was used to rust proof them. All I had was gray primer and I really didn't care because the battery would conceal everything. A uh, rivet nut center had to be used to um, apply the fasteners to the sheet metal. Then the aftermarket bracket could be laid atop this. Now the batteries have to be shifted toward the engine block because they had to be rotated 90 degrees to fit side by side. Now, uh, the battery on the left rubbed against the shroud uh, that goes around the radiator. So that had to be cut. And you can see here, we're using a, a box utility knife to cut into the plastic. And uh, the ballast to the HID line, this is aftermarket as well, that had to be relocated to fit the batteries in. Now, once they were mounted, they, uh, they fit very snugly. That's not going anywhere. This is the top of the bracket. A battery isolator is responsible for making sure that a battery has adequate power to start the engine. So what you see atop this retaining clip is this black box, also known as the automatic charging relay. That yellow switch can be controlled manually. Otherwise, in automatic mode, it decides whether to connect or disconnect the two batteries. The one on the left is the main battery, and that's what starts the vehicle. The one on the right is what most of the uh, electronic devices are connected to. And during normal driving, the alternator charges both of them, so you want them connected. Now, an additional remote switch was installed just below and to the left of the steering wheel so that I could control the isolator from within the cockpit. The battery terminal closest to the oil filler cap uh, was just barely clearing it there. And when I tried to unscrew the oil filler cap, I hit my finger against that bolt and took a small piece of skin off. So we placed this rubber cap on the bolt. Now these two automatic reset circuit breakers that were included with the e-brake controller are convenient for overloaded circuits, but they really don't uh, offer long-term protection when a short circuit condition is present. So we replace these with the more robust circuit breakers. The center console had to be removed to access the button panel to install the 12 volt monitor for both the main and auxiliary batteries. So we've got our two deep cycle batteries. They're automatically connected to one another. And I've got these circuit breakers. Um, this particular one is for the controller to the solar panel. And so if I turn this on by just pushing this little switch, the Bluetooth comes on as well, which yeah. communicates the information from this controller to my cell phone app. So if you come over here, let's take a look at that. 
know this is upside down. Let me see if I can turn it sideways. So uh, we've got the green light, which means uh, it's for sealed, and sealed will be your absorbing glass mat battery, the AGM battery. Yeah. If we press it again, how do you switch this? Uh, orange is for the gel, red is for flooded uh, acid, uh, lead acid battery, and blue is for lithium ion. How do you switch this? I think just press that. Just press it, which I'm doing. Nothing's happening. Why is that? Does it know? I think it knows. Okay, so. It knows because of the, uh, the Bluetooth. I see. So I guess I can't switch it, which is good because I can't make a mistake. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to switch it to some other type of battery, but I can't. Um, so, <clears throat> pretty cool. I love this bracket that you made. It's very nice. It's sturdy. It's very, very sturdy. And this is the uh, pump emission. emissions pump. And it clears this bracket that we have these two circuit breakers. Those, those are like, like safety feature. Right. So if we have a short in the trailer, this will trip. It will trip. And it's already disconnected now, but let's say if I'm towing something, I'll turn it on. Yeah. <clears throat> and then this one, of course, is to the Takancha, yeah. which I'm not using. So You're it's just using as well, parasitic it. drainage when I'm driving the vehicle. There's no need for the thing to be on. Yeah. But if I am towing a trailer, I just turn the switch like that and it's connected. So this is for the e-brake controller and this one is for the seven blade. Seven pin. Uh, seven pin connector yeah. for the trailer. Well, there you have it. It is now 2.30 a.m. on Thanksgiving morning, and I'm just about to hit the sack. For those of you who have an FJ Cruiser and have been thinking about installing two batteries side by side, I hope this video was somewhat helpful. And for the rest of you, thank you for watching. I also would like to extend my thanks to my friend Nestor Angeles from Vallejo, California, for doing most of this install. For without his help, I probably would still be working on this project. So till next time, be safe, be healthy, and happy. Take care.